reach the tone. Monterey, California. I've selected Monterey, California. Let's go. Avocados, five for a dollar. Seven for a dollar. As you go further down, they're cheaper. I kind of want to go fast. No, this is a racetrack right here, I think, right? I don't want Alexis to throw up, so. <laughs> We're just getting here. We're supposed to be like for press. Okay. She laughed at us. She doesn't She's believe that totally we're press. We're supposed to be press or something. We make videos about stuff. This is pretty Oh my goodness. So apparently we went in the wrong entrance. Press is all the way on that side. But they got hospitality. They usually mean snacks. That's cool. I hope it's worth the walk. It'd be cool if we had bikes. All right, got press passes. That's pretty sweet. I don't know what that means. I'm just wondering where the snacks are at. That's what I'm saying. Let's find them. So we're at Sea Otter. For those of you who don't know, Sea Otter is an event that historically was a mountain bike race that turned into kind of a cycling festival. It's primarily a consumer event, but there's a lot of different trade people that like to come see and see new products, stuff like that. It's primarily around the mountain bike side, but it's kind of evolved in something to be a bit greater. This is my first time here, so kind of learning and figuring it out as we go along. So we flew in this morning from Long Beach to San Jose and drove over. I had a pretty cool experience with the rent-a-car. Actually, they upgraded us. They was having some problems with the system and the people behind us were being really rude and I try to be kind of nice, as I usually do. And he said, oh, you know, we're, I'm gonna upgrade you to luxury. That was kind of cool, so pays to be nice. Over at the Bosch booth, go see some friends. Hey! What's up, y'all? Hey, what's up, good what's to up? see ya. How you doing? Oh, yeah, get this hug on film. <laughs> yeah. You guys just start doing demos today, so or? Nice, relaxed, yeah, right first sea otter. So you've been many times, I imagine. You, you, sea otter? Yeah. What number sea otter is this for you? Uh, nine. Yeah. Maybe. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, good. How's it going? Oh, good. The gold sponsor of the event, huh? I'm happy to take notes. Is this dictation? <laughs> this is not what this is? These are all the brands that Actually, yes. These are, this is global. I know a couple of these might America. have been like I kind of courted them over here. Mustache, I think, Risa Mueller. I think this is our uh, recruitment board for Propel, actually. I think it. Propel went over to Europe and recruited this board here for us. And now we now get the I, I keep well. on asking for my commission check, you know? I'm just really? like, okay, when, okay. you know? Well, so for those of you guys who don't know, this is my friend, LJ Miller. So LJ is responsible for the tech reps that are throughout the country. How many tech reps are there actually throughout the U.S. right now? We have 10 in the U.S., 10 person team. What was one of your proudest achievements in racing? I think honestly, is getting other people to race. What is racing to you? Why do you want other people to race? It's a good experience. It kind of gets people out of their comfort zone a little bit, and I think that leads to progress, believe it or not. It's good. It's good to see that side of it, even if you're not a racer. It's so good to go there once or twice just to experience it. We're actually thinking about trying to get Alexis to race. Alexis. Alexis How about... You? Alexis. Hey, welcome. Hello. My name's LJ. Alexis. How are you? Alexis is about to get voluntold on something here. You guys know that term, voluntold? She, she rides mountain bikes, and we said that maybe it might be into doing one of the, the races or something like sure. that. Sure. We, we, we don't have any expectations that you're going to win, but, but it would be certainly cool if you did. Um, I'd be surprised, for sure. LJ has also been kind of pushing us to get on the mountain bike scene a little bit, and Alexis is like, hey, we got to sell mountain Why don't we sell mountain bikes? We don't really sell many mountain bikes at Propel. That. Do you guys think that, that we should sell mountain bikes at Propel? What do, what do you think? Most of the best technology for e-bikes comes from the mountain bike side. Urban um, with connectivity, but as far as tech goes, I think definitely not. There's also another couple of OEs. Interesting. Just looking. There's even some on here I you don't, don't even have it. flyers. Not on exactly. Here. And we meet with them during the show. So. Yeah. If you were to say there's one thing you gotta do or you gotta see at Sea Otter, what is it? I'd say get into the VIP booth somehow. We got press passes. Oh, you got press passes. Do they VIP. got snacks over there? That's what I'm wondering. That's why you need to go. Okay, we gotta find. We gotta find this VIP. New York spot. needs snacks. 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 Came for the snacks, but they got bikes too. That's cool. So this dude just rode up here. Where do you start out? El Viejo, Orange Wh County. For, for those of you who don't know, somewhere Southern California, we're in Northern California. How, how many miles was it? 450. Wow. And in how many days? Four days. How you feeling? Good. Why are you doing it? We work for also an e-mobility company, Bosch, and yeah. I think it's just a great way to commute other than a a plane or a car up to these events to show to show that's that uh, that's possible I, I have to admit that we did 
take a plane and drive a car here, so I feel a little. But but you did it for us, so I appreciate it. I, Someone I feel... has to do it. Oh, you guys see what this is here, huh? He's got one. See it's this? one of the first ones. Okay, this is a Benno hat. Also one of the first ones. But I have to say, Benno, I'm sorry, but this hat's a little bit more special, I gotta say, you know, what do you guys think? People have been asking for this one for a long time, and we're gonna put it on the website for sale. There's only gonna be a hundred of them. This one is special because we can't give it away. Nobody wants it. Just that's a that's a Propel original. I'm gonna make it and turn it into a truck. Look at this. this. This even got Propel, like, this is like Propel official. Nice. Like, you know, you got Propel here. Oh, wow. Like, this is made for me. Like, how your bikes are made for, you know, by you. That looks good on you, buddy. Look at with, with the ears the in there. Ears are you cold? Which, which I don't know way? if this hat can fit me. I got a big head. You have it in or out? What you do with it? Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Come on. We we're supposed to like talk about something. We got this cool thing. Let's check it out. Okay. You've seen this product, the Remy Demi, and people want to ride people on the back of it. Now we're introducing the jump seat rack with a passenger kit. This is first of all our jump seat rack. This is the frame. This is actually all part of the bike here and this is add adds on. So this on aggressive this, this on its own here is what we call the the jump seat rack. You can put pannier bags on the side or you can also put a yep seat in here. 40 kilograms so 90, 90 pounds pounds. Tara's about 90 pounds, so. This is what's kind of special, I think, because you have. Listen, I'm sorry, Ben. I don't mean to offend you, but you're not 90 pounds. All right, we're going to test this, though, if you don't mind. Tara. I want to make it clear I am not 90 pounds. How does it feel so far? Good. We don't have helmets on, but we do have this nice Benno hat available for 9 No, I don't know. Are we selling these things? Well, let's try this out. This is what we came here for. It's a, there's a big little dip. I don't know if we can handle that. Oh, yeah. Big little dip. It feels pretty stable. I like it. I think it's just cute. It looks fun. It does look cute. It has some little handles. I say, good job. Thank you. Appreciate Get it. my stamp. <laughs> Here's the Bulls booth. We should check them out, see if somebody could show us around. And What's up, man? Hey, Chris, how you doing? <laughs> good to see yeah. you, man. This is the Grinder Evo, and it's the Bosch speed motor. It's a Gen 3 speed motor with a 500 watt hour power tube. We've been looking at this bike like, what else can we do with this bike? And we found four uses for it. Set up as a commuter, so it easily transitions into a touring bike. We, we basically been kind of reimagining the bikes that we do have in terms of resourcefulness to say like, what else can we do with this bike? We first started taking the fenders off, and the nice thing is most commuter bikes will have the light wired um, into the back. So taking the fender off is a process and you want to leave it to the bike shop, but this bike's fitted with our Monkey Link technology, oh, yeah. which is a, an integrated light system already connected when you buy it. And all you need to do is purchase a, a, a rear light and a headlight transitions into a daily commuter. And as people are getting out of their houses and trying to beat the crazy, like they're, you know, they're exploring more. People are exploring more. And this allows you to do that. I've had this on single track with, you know, without the fenders and racks, it performs yeah. great. And as a commuter, it's a blast. Micro adventures, yeah. like more and more people are starting to explore and, and do that sort of thing. And I think that e-bikes make that even more possible and interesting. And, and then you don't even have to necessarily use the car to bridge the gap. You just ride from where you're going and just go out and get there and just explore. So Iconic is the is the name we give to this. The e Evo indicates the battery is integrated in the down frame. So okay. this is a touring bike, city bike, uh, that actually has the capability uh, with the 120 millimeters of travel to hit some rough commutes. Uh -huh. And this will be our class one version with the new Bosch smart system. The Iconic Evo TR1 Speed, right? I did really well. So this is the, the hardtail version, so it hits a little lower price point. You know, when you don't have full suspension, you can get up and go a little faster. You don't, you're not putting your energy into the shocks, you're putting yeah. it into the pedals and, and getting, getting up and going faster. Still with the wide tires, they give a lot of comfort. This bike's really capable for a lot of things too, not just riding on the street as well, right? Yeah. Like made a video recently about like go anywhere, do anything type of bikes. And you know, when you're, you're investing a decent amount of money in an e-bike, it's nice to know that you can just do a lot more with it, right? You ready? Okay. Oh, don't. Ah. One score. One, one, one point game, okay. Hey! Uh, all right, all right. Good game, good game. I don't know what I owe you, but. Uh... I'll show you the, the rider behind the jersey here. This is Chris Kernahan. He's a new addition to our marketing team, and he was the he came in sixth overall Sweet. and uh, won the old guy's uh, 
<laughs> race. Right. It's yeah. got a payload of 330 pounds. Whew. Like all of our bikes are sturdy. They can take riders or, or you know payload up to 300 pounds. Yeah. And another th 30 pounds onto that is actually pretty significant. Right. And to do it in a bike that feels like a mountain bike and has a wave frame that's accessible to so many riders with mobility right, for, limitations. But generally speaking, you have a diamond frame, right? Like and that and that kind of adds to the stability of the bike. So creating a frame style like this, but still including the you know rigidity, is not an easy feat. All right, guys, we're over at the Bosch booth at Sea Otter, and I connected with our friend Steven, thinking that it'd be cool just to kind of get a little update on 2022. And you, you've come to this event before, and it's kind of shifted over the years. I mean, it started as just exclusively a mountain bike race, and then it's kind of become this festival. What we love about e-bike racing is that you can have a really cool vibe. You know, it yeah. takes, you know, yes, there are people who want to win, but a lot of people are doing it just for fun and it makes for a really cool atmosphere. So this is a bike that we put together as a concept, mostly just to show where we see the future of e-bikes, more and more integration, you know, even the suspension integrated here, the system's so smoothly part of the frame design, but also just the style, just the, the lines and the, yeah. the design element of it. This is a whole, a whole new world for us. This is the e-bikes for, for business, e-bikes for last mile, delivery, a logistics solution, and you're going to start seeing a lot more of these. The big reason the coaster came to us is that their big customers were saying, you know, whatever you're providing us, it needs to be UL certified. And Bosch, we've, we've come in fully believing in having all of our products UL certified from the beginning. Proactively, it wasn't a requirement, and, and that's yeah. one of the things that I really respect about Bosch in general is just thinking long term and thinking like, okay, this is the best way to do yeah. it. This is not necessarily the easiest way to do it. This is not necessarily even the, the most profitable way to do it in the short term, but longer term, like we need to be thinking about what, how we're having an impact on this industry, how we're really creating this yeah. thing. I think that's important. We don't sell these products to last one or two years. We sell them to last, you know, decades. So the smart system is, it's a big step for us. It's sort of the creation of a new platform. We'll continue to have our existing platforms as well. And it's a new way of the parts all communicating uh, with each other. You've, you've still got a controller. This controller is improved over the previous ones, um, a bit more ergonomic, also has some display information on itself. So you could run it without the display if you chose to. The motor and the internals, pretty much the same, but uh, new connection ports that just make it uh, a bit easier for the bicycle brands to uh, create the internal wiring structures of the e-bike and gives them a bit more flexibility with frame design. The, the product that's available now, the product that's out there in the market now with the Bosch system is the best complete system we're, we know of and right. we're incredibly proud of that. So, you know, no one going out and buying an e-bike now with the Bosch system, you know, needs to be worried that they're not getting the best of what's available. <laughs> Friends I haven't met yet, <laughs> always appreciated. So you have this special project that you've been working on and, yeah. and you were telling me about it before. One thing we really like is the concept of earning your turns. You know, okay. there, there have been some in the past who've used that as a, as a way to say, you know, you've got to suffer on the uphills before you can enjoy your downhill turns. But we kind of turn that on its head and say, you really earn your turns uh, by giving back to the mountain bike community, by, by building trails, by engaging uh, with, with land managers and helping out, but also helping out the next generation of riders. Yeah. And so we're super excited about our partnership with NICA, which is the National Interscholastic Cycling Association. That's kids on junior high, high school mountain bike teams around the country. Okay, so we learned recently in Eurobike that Flyer is coming to the U.S. As we said before, Alexis is going to do the race later. And so you figure, what better bike to go on than the new brand that we're working with, Flyer, on this Uprock bike. First of all, I'm super excited that you made it to our booth here huh? to visit Flyer and be like number one Flyer dealer in the U.S. So some basic details about the company from what I learned. It's 25 years in business, e-bike only from, from the beginning, pretty much, right? Absolutely, e-bikes only. We started back in 1996. We said if we come over here, we want to concentrate on a few bikes only. Low step frame. Very low step frame. Belt drive. Five speed. The five Nexus five speed. This is something we don't see too much in the US. We were talking about this before, but it's a great drivetrain. It's a great hub system. And then we have, you know, a similar bike with the folding version. 
exactly. Two power tubes, belt drive, roll off hub, Gen 4 CX motor, like wow. Butterfly design, you take the batteries out on yeah. both sides. Huh? The stoker, the guy on the back seat, does not have to pedal when the guy in the front pedals. So oh, it's got the freewheel. It the has back. a freewheel in the back, so you can pedal whenever you feel like you want to pedal. And then you have one other bike that you're you're bringing to the US, and, and actually this is the bike that Alexis is going to ride. I think these bikes might be coming back to our shop after the show. They will come back to your shop, so it's not only Alexis who can ride it, an Uproc 6 it's called, huh? and that's the top specification of our bike. A full carbon fiber frame, mullet design, so a bigger front wheel, 29 inch, 27 and a half inch in the back. To have a short compact um, rear end, 170 millimeter of travel in the front, 160 millimeter of travel in the rear. So you see the shifting is electric, and even here the seat post is electric, huh? Wireless. There's no, no cables. There. No yeah. cables. Wireless. Everything. Just waiting for Alexis to get back from trial run. So, how was it? A lot of fun. Yeah. So, so how did it feel? Do you feel comfortable? Yeah, feels really good. Feels solid. How about the electric dropper? That's I, I don't have too much experience oh. with that. It's not like a full lever. It's just like a little button. So it's like very oh, wow. like soft kind of. Yeah. Oh. See that? See that in action. All right, so the, the race starts, I think, at about 4.30, about an hour or so? 60 minutes. About yeah. an hour. You feel like you got the endurance for it. I feel like the bike has the endurance for me. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. The nerves are hitting. Zero expectations, but the nerves are still hitting. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do a full course ride, though, so I'm just going to follow everyone else. Okay, yeah, as long as you're the first as one. As, uh... as long as I keep up. <laughs> So I don't actually know what it's about. Me neither. Ask her. But yeah, you know a little bit about racing. How, how do you how do you handle these situations? I don't know. You leave your soul behind. Oh, that that was my mistake. I took it with me. I really respect you went out there and got into it. So thank you for representing. To my side, you look like a f***ing winner. Well, thank you. I wiped my lips off. <laughs> oh my god. I really I haven't experienced dust like this since I wrecked, so. so they say you left it on the field but you brought some of the field with you too though, huh? I have to take some of it home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For memories. <laughs> Sorry. A little dusty. All right, so day two at, not Eurobike, Sea Otter. Been cool, but what I'm realizing is I'm seeing all these people I haven't seen for like two years, and I like need to catch up with them. But I want to, for you guys to see like what's going on here. This is Alexis from our Long Beach shop. Asia before, and she's doing social media, so usual propel fashion and figure it out. Figure it out. We get special access. 
to nowhere. <laughs> So Chris kind of gave us the task of showing you guys what is the latest out there about e-bikes and bikes, but I think we, we're gonna tour an RV instead. What do you think he'll think about that? I mean, if you really think about it, bike life and RV life almost go hand in hand. They do I think go hand be okay in with hand. it. Bike content right there. There's a bike garage. So this is my third time, but I haven't been here since 2004. So I grew up reading about it and seeing California. But yeah, I came here and it was just like Shangri-La, right? All bike racing, all the vendors, all the excitement. So my son is out there roaming around. He won his race today. So that's been my favorite part so far, right? So this is a big deal. For a guy who came here 20 years ago, plus years ago, but to see my son win, it was super awesome. And he says, wow, this is like the best thing ever, Dad. And I was like, <laughs> that was awesome. So let's check out the rest of this. RV. <laughs> slowly, slowly flop. Oh, this is comfy. I could totally fall asleep. What's your review? 10 out of 10. Chris, <laughs> can we get a camper? No. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we're gonna go find out how to wash an e-bike. Unfortunately, no one has e-bikes. Doesn't look good for us. You never want to use a real, like, high-pressured power washer when you clean your bike, ever. So what Muckoff did is they made, like, a lower-pressure one specifically for cleaning bikes. Oh, this is fun though, you know, kind of the community service, and people are just so excited after a big event to get their bike washed. Hi there. Hello. E bikes are on such high rise. Around half of the bikes we insure are e bikes. There is a default basic coverage that is physical damage coverage, total and accidental crash loss, as well as theft, damage in transit. You don't have to be riding the bike for it to be covered. Uh, all theft claims require a police report, and uh, you can add optional coverages on top depending on how and where you ride. You may need them, you may not, but let's say the optional coverages will be liability. Then there is medical coverage. That's for when you get wrecked. A lot of times thieves don't leave a bike lock behind as an evidence and that's also okay. As long as you file a police report then you will be covered. So we do require the bike to be locked to something immovable when you store it outside of your insured location with a bike lock of your choice. The heavier the better because bike locks are not that expensive but you avoid paying a deductible if your bike gets stolen because like with every insurance, they have to be deductible. That was actually really great. It was super informative. I feel like a lot of the other people I've talked to so far are just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is what we sell. But this guy's like, yeah, we sell insurance. We take care of people no matter what happens. So that's really cool. Fellow insurance. What happens with TerraCycle is once it gets sent in, all of the packets are shred down, melted into upcycled pellets and made into upcycled lumber. So anything from playgrounds, bike racks, Adirondack chairs, really helping all of this single serve live a second life outside of the landfill. We're always in the search for snacks and we heard they got some over here at Echoes. We're actually media so we're welcome here but we're also friends of these guys. They're a PR agency. All right so we found Jacob and he's gonna help us out and just show you what going on I mean but you guys are a PR agency mm -hmm. like that. would yeah, you define yeah. yourselves as such Absolutely. I don't know PR marketing and okay. within that falls different stuff like events yeah. and you know, influencers affiliate marketing we've been wondering if like we're considered influencers now we're in this weird space of being a bike shop well, but also doing you in here right? YouTube yeah I guess <laughs> so you know familiar with Chrome really big in New York big with the bike messenger yeah. scene but it's kind of evolving from there and for us like in the e-bike space, that's what we primarily focus. I think a lot of people struggle with having clothes that work for them that are not performance clothing yeah. that you know you can still wear to work or just wear in your everyday. This stuff performs for what it needs to perform for. So yeah. you know, in, in urban environments, the elements, rain. I think a lot of people don't necessarily recognize the importance of a good shoe when you're yeah. biking. And a lot of shoes are made to be very compliant and that sort of thing, but actually having a shoe that's a little bit too compliant can be an issue. 
Yeah, so we cut this up actually with the angle grinder. Right there you can see the power plate. So that just helps with power transfer. You know, the pedaling motion, if you're just wearing vans or shoes that you can fold, it starts to make your foot cramp up. You need it to stop right there so you can, once you hop off the bike, you can still walk. Okay. So on, off the bike. That's the whole thing. So you don't have to like walk around like a duck yeah. as like many people do with bike shoes. Yeah. Exactly. This is the barrage tote. I don't know, cruising around. I like to keep stuff off my back. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any sort of like cargo or perfect for riding and then yeah. you hop off. There you and you just ride there and you can tuck right. this in. And then you also have this ex exterior web caging here. Just to throw extra stuff like, you know, maybe your lock, water bottles, an extra pair, an extra jacket just in case it starts to rain. I could see this working well on a cargo bike with these waterproof zippers. That's pretty sweet. Take it through sweet. a car wash. Oh, there you go. That's oh, yeah. Billy, do you want to talk? You want to What's jump up, in? Billy? Billy, you're our two best experts. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Out of everything here in our booth, and actually out of everything at the Sea Otter, this is like my Oprah's favorite thing of so everything. <laughs> so. so this is the Dynaplug Air Tool. You use this with a CO2. So if I were to go on a big ride, I would have this loaded. But this is really meant for speed, right? We'll just rip right into the tire here. Got to get it ready. Fine and plug the hole and then you just let a little co2 out now we're back fully full up and then you just pull it out and the hole is totally wow. plugged and wow. that's less than 10 seconds from start to finish yeah so. there's one other thing i really want to show you that's pretty interesting i just got a notification about this this lock from a company called hip lock they made a lock out of this new material pretty much can't be defeated by a, a grinder you can see here that they've been experimenting with this with the grinder it still hasn't been defeated but actually the way that this is is it's got a square shackle so you'd actually have to defeat both sides of it but this is some special material that they actually make safes out of you can see all these cutoff wheels that have just kind of been torn down to nothing i figure since they have this demonstration here i should probably just show you how it works i did prepare this ahead of time with the new grinder wheel don't try this at home or on the street anywhere if you're into that sort of thing i don't like you I don't know if you notice what's going on here, but this grinder wheel is actually being ground down. It's not actually the lock so much, but keep on going. It's actually getting to the point where it's not really so usable. To my understanding, what they said is that it actually would take several grinder wheels to even get through one side, maybe upwards of eight or so. You could see I didn't get very far, even with that one grinder wheel. Maybe, I don't know, 10% through it or something like that. But keep in mind, I would still have to do the other side as well. So this is the ferro safe lock. This is it when it doesn't look all dusted up and such. Well, Sea Otter, it's been fun. See you next year.